Ever feel like you're spinning too many plates at home and in ministry? Well, we have some tips for you today on the Church Revitalization Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast, brought to you by the Malfers Group team, where each week we tackle important, actionable topics to help churches thrive. And now, here's your hosts, Scott Ball and AJ Matthew. Welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast. My name is Scott Ball. I'm joined by my friend and co-host, AJ Matthew. AJ. Hey, man. Talking about work-life balance. You know, a few weeks ago, or maybe it's probably been months ago at this point, I don't know, time blurs together. Yeah. Um, we did an episode about um, how to reach Gen Z. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Or or millennials versus Gen Z? I think that's what it was. Millennials yeah, versus... Yeah, right, right, right. And... Um, one of the things that was sort of emphasized about Gen Z in particular, or no, about millennials in particular, is that they have a heightened sort of care and focus on work-life balance. Do you remember that? Well, you know, it's been, it's been a couple of weeks. So, Really, you <laughs> asked me if I remember something live. Left That's been... <laughs> throwing me under the bus. I never remember anything, but yeah. <laughs> Well, let me remind you that it is a it is an important thing for m- millennials generally to to be able to achieve some sort of a work life balance, um, and so very often you know they care more about paid time off than they do about a raise, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and so uh, I think that this is an interesting topic, this idea of balancing ministry and family because ministry is such a weird kind of job; it's different from a typical nine to five, yeah. you know, going to the cubicle, clock in, clock out um, type of a, of a job. In a, in some senses, you're never off. You're always on. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, you can do things like take your kids to school and pick them up in the middle of the day. Whereas mm-hmm. someone who's working in a cubicle maybe can't do that. So there's some give and take here, some positive and negative and finding that balance between um, family and ministry can be really difficult. So today we want to give some practical tips, some insights, some strategies to help you create some clear lines and maybe balance that. Because sometimes, AJ, my experience has been the amount of time you're spending working isn't necessarily more than um, a typical person out in the business world. It's just the it's the when of the time. It's not that you you spent more than 50 hours a week working, but you spent 15 of them during sort of prime time hours when you would normally mm-hmm. get to be home if you worked in a cubicle, if that makes sense. Yeah. We're going to talk about all those kinds of things today and and how we can try to manage it. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's definitely a necessary, it's a necessary thing to explore uh, because a lot of people do have trouble with this. I don't know if, you know, if it gets better over time and probably does, you know, maybe newer, newer in ministry. Um, this is, it's hard to teach probably this early on, you know, that you would get your first ministry job and, uh, and automatically be like really good at this. You know, that's definitely something mm-hmm. that comes with experience and with different life stages. So, yes. um, which also might help then, you know, getting into ministry young and single, you can form some bad work habits, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden you have a, a spouse and kids and, and maybe, you know, a flow of work or a lack thereof has kind of gotten set in. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, here's so the irony, AJ, I, I honestly think there are a lot of guys who get into ministry and they've heard all this, you know, you know, you're always on and all this. Mm-hmm. And so they, they build it up in their brain that man ministry really is, it's, it's so much harder than anything else. But then if they were to leave the ministry and go work a normal job, they'd see it's not all sunshine and roses and lollipops either. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you don't, you, you really, it's like, they're really strict on here's how many vacation days you have. Yeah. Oh, you're sick today. Here, how many sick days do you have? You don't get yeah. to be sick today. You, I mean, it's a, it's a totally different. The accountability for time is much stricter mm-hmm. than in ministry. Yeah. 
And so I don't know. My experience has been with with guys. It's like they think they have it hard. Go work. Go work the the normal sort of eight to six mm-hmm. grind. Yeah. And right. tell me if you if you really think ministry is the the slog. It it's it's a, it is a slog. It's a different kind of slog. And so yeah, for sure. Maybe, yeah. Maybe the first thing I just want to say to sort of frame it up is. Get it out of your head that, wow, you have it so much worse or harder than anyone else. You don't. It's just, it's, it's unique. It's Mm -hmm. a unique kind of hard. Yeah. And if you'll implement some of the strategies we're going to talk about in this episode, I actually think you end up coming out ahead of what a typical, you know, um, a a typical business person or a typical job situation. You, there are some real advantages to the flexibility of ministry of a ministry. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, you know, self-employed for most of my adult life. So never worked on staff at a church, but there's an awful lot of crossover between almost any self-employed person and working on staff at a church. A lot of similarities um, and pitfalls. So um, different nature of, of the work being done, but a lot of similarities in it as a, as a job or career. So Okay. Sure. Uh, so yeah, the first one, and, and I, you know, I think rightly so, it is the first point. Establishing priorities, Scott, is super important. And priorities can change over time, and they will in different seasons mm-hmm. of life. But kind of having this set of almost non-negotiables, like this is, this is you know, when I'm planning out my schedule or my work or when, when that call comes in and I'm in the middle of something else, am I going to say yes or no to that? Um, and I mean, you know, for me, certainly are things revolving around special things with my kids. Um, you know, there's, there's things that I've just have made time for over the years that were just, they were going to happen. Um, uh, and, and as hard as it is to say no to something, even if it's good or important, um, establishing those priorities is not only important for you, for yourself to be able to make sure that you're present for those things, but for those people that you love, that you're making a priority for, um, because they'll pick up on those patterns over time. Like you said, you were going to do this and something else you, you know, you went ahead and did something else. The people that you want to make priorities for will know if you've made them a priority and they'll know if you've not made them a priority and that's heartbreaking. Um, and you know, so I, I really hate pe- to see that later in life for people that are, are, you know, have discovered that maybe they didn't do that. Um, yeah. that's, you don't want to, you don't want to have those kind of regrets. Yes, the 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 stereotypical prototypical pastor's kid, you know, um, thing where the the kid grows up in church, surrounded by church, but then grows up and hates church. Uh, largely, it has nothing to do with church. It has to do with their their parent who was in ministry, who prioritized ministry things over over the kid. And, um, and it's easy to do, and I'm not here to stand in judgment on any of that because I've made that, those kinds of mistakes, everything we're talking about is something that I'm, you know, I'm 37 years old. I'm still learning these things. And though I'm not in staff ministry now, I'm, I'm in a different kind of ministry. All of the same factors are still at play. Um, and especially because AJ and I travel so much, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, uh, yes, when we're home, we don't have the same kind of obligations week to week, but we're gone for three, four, sometimes seven or 10 day stretches at a time. And it's all the more reason we have to be really cautious. And AJ knows, you know, my kids are in a different phase of life than his kids are. And so I have to be, it's a different level, I guess, of, of prioritization and time scheduling. And plus mm-hmm. you homeschooled, you know, our kids are, um, in, in public school. And so, you know, where I have to kind of prioritize school breaks. My kids are off of school at, you know, these times. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, you, have well, to you know how easy it is to work all week, get on a plane on a Friday, go work with a church all weekend, get home on a Sunday night, sit down at our desk on Monday morning and just start working again. Just, uh, you know, yeah. just like, and, and, and it's easy just to forget. I mean, I've, I've literally done that. And then you go like a couple of weeks and go, Oh, I haven't had a day off. I haven't taken a day off. I, in a couple taken, weeks. I forgot a about that. <laughs> yeah, that's totally. And so you just have to set priorities and go, all right, these are things I'm not going to miss. And um, I can, I, I'll just be transparent as I always am on this podcast. You know, um, last year I had um, 
during a, a, our my kids fall break i always protect those breaks mm-hmm. but uh, i had an, a church i needed to i there was just no other time like there was literally no other two day stretch that i could go to to work with this church except during fall break because my the whole rest of my calendar was booked up and they weren't available the other times and so i was gone and and that cost me relationally at home i mean it was that was I will do anything I can to avoid that again, because it wasn't worth it. Um, it, I still looking back on it, I don't know how it could have been any different, but it, it was, I hated everything about that. So just be sure you know what those priorities are and, you know, how severe of a problem would it take for you to violate that priority? And that should be a really high, a high threshold and not a low one. Cause that's where I think the problems start to come in when you go, Oh, this is priority. But, you know, it doesn't take very much of an, you know, in this instance, my instance, this church could only work with me that that was it. And to me, that felt like I I felt like I was over the barrel. I'd committed to working with them. Mm -hmm. I I didn't feel like I had any other choice. I still hate it. You know, um, I'm still kind of question, was that a high enough level of urgency? Um, But if you're willing to break a priority for or anything that's that's not great so it starts mm-hmm. with establish those priorities yeah yeah our next point then is uh getting a little bit more on the on like the day-to-day and that's setting boundaries and managing time so boundaries are different than priorities we're talking about just in your normal daily calendar like when am i available for work is it eight mm-hmm. to five is it you know 11 to seven whatever you know whatever that's going to be, and it could differ from day to day, even depending on just kind of how your work flows, but, but establishing more just generalized boundaries for work availability and then managing that time, because, you know, it's one thing to, to say what it is, and it's another thing to practice it. So, you know, I mean, one of the, one of the simple tips is simply blocking off time. And I've gotten better at this over the years as well. Um, just to, uh, things, especially things that maybe have gotten pushed back a few times and, um, just put it on the calendar, block off some time. Um, and even if it has to be some personal time, um, or some family time for something, not even necessarily anything planned, but like, you know what, I'm just going to be home. I'm going to be available, um, you know, from two to 4 PM on that Wednesday afternoon, um, for whatever needs to get done. If it's on your calendar, it's not a lie when someone asks if you're available. So yeah, you know, you're really uh, not. Me, I've got it on my calendar. Let me give some, a practical tip on this. I, I, we've talked about this and we, we we should probably get some sort of like promo code that we could make some money off this. We don't make any money off this, but uh, we are religious users of Calendly, AJ and I, mm-hmm. um, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y, Calendly. Um, if you ever try to book a meeting with either of us, we're going to send you a Calendly link. We will never do the back and forth on, well, are you free this day or are you free that day? Um, because I don't have an assistant. Neither of us have an assistant. We don't have that kind of money at the Malfors Group. Um, and so my assistant is Calendly. And I will tell you this, here's a huge difference. Anytime you say, oh, I'm not free that time at that time. People in, instinctively go, mm, is he really not free or does he just not want to meet with me then? Or, you know, there's that that feeling. When you send them a Calendly link, it gives them access to your calendar and they can see these times he's available, these times he's not available. And um, that's just so much better. And it, you can use this at your church. You can set on Calendly. You go, all right, I only want to do counseling appointments on on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, you know, you want to leave Monday and Friday open. Maybe one of those is your day off and the other day is focused on writing your sermon or something. I'm just making something up. Mm-hmm. Then send, send people that Calendly link and, and say, here's, here's when I'm free. Yeah. And yeah. guess what? They'll only pick a time that's open on your calendar. <laughs> so, uh, it's just such a practical tip. Mm-hmm. You, if you're not doing this, I don't know why. Because when you're standing there looking at your phone, you're going to be tempted 
to go, well, maybe I could make an adjustment. No, don't do that. If I'm standing next to someone, even I'll go here, I'm, I'm going to email you my calendar. I don't try to do the back and forth with them, even in person. Just yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. If it's booked, yep. you're booked. Helps you to say that's no. right. That's right. Uh, yeah. And, and one other tip kind of on this subject also is, is in regard to delegation, which um, I think we've done more, a little bit more uh, covered this more on a previous episode. I'm not really remember when that was, but um, certainly, I mean, it's certainly a part of leadership development. Um, you yep. should be able to be working on having people around you that you could probably offload some, some things to that mm-hmm. is not the best use of your time to begin with. This is a little bit more of a long range change to how you handle your time but um but it should be on your radar at least is uh totally. like reassessing just what how am i spending my time what tasks are taking up my time and is it right for me to be doing all those things or should i be working with somebody else that can take some of that stuff and free up my time for more important things yeah you and i just in our ministry we've gotten better about this where we go this is not a meeting i need to be on you know, I'll be like, here, AJ, you take this, or you'll say the same thing to me. You'd be like, this is not, this is, this is a Scott meeting and not an AJ meeting. And we'll, we'll pass those off to one another. Or, you know, if AJ's on a, on a trip or doing some of this family, I'll take it and just trust one another. And, um, you've got people in your ministry, even if you're the only staff person, you've got people, you've got deacons, you've got elders, you've got someone that you can say, this is probably this marriage is probably not going to fall apart tomorrow. Like let's start, (laughs) let's start with, you know, they're having a little squabble. Let's send them to an elder first and see how they do. Mm -hmm. They may get all the, they maybe just need a a hug and a, it's going to be okay. And a prayer and going to be, and that's it. You know, trust people to help you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Next, we're talking about communicating and collaborating. And this is with, you know, those closest around you for sure. Um, You need to certainly getting into ministry. um, And and again, you know, these things, life changes, right? Maybe you entered the ministry when you were single. Um, Well, I mean, that should be part of a marriage conversation is like, I'm in ministry. Here's what, here's what it's like to be in ministry. Um, Because marrying into someone that's in ministry, you, you now are in ministry. Welcome to ministry. So, um, or, you know, it could have even been a change of life, a change of career later, but, uh, just communicating well about that. Like, here's, here's kind of what my flow is looking like right now. Um, what my, what, you know, the necessities are that I have to be a part of. Um, and, uh, and it's, I mean, it's a different scope anyway, right? I mean, ministry doesn't run Monday through Friday. It's, it is very much a weekend job for most people. Um, so when is that day off going to be? Um, working with your spouse and your <clears throat> and your family about about uh, when we can plan vacations or trips or or to be able to do some of these things. But so collaborating together, uh, making sure people are, are all on the same page, um, that certainly is is a is a pretty major tip in just maintaining peace at home, managing expectations. You know, I mean, so much of of dis- mm-hmm. in general disappointment comes when expectations aren't met. If right. we all talk about this first and we al- align right expectations, <clears throat> then we won't necessarily, or maybe as strongly have this feeling of disappointment or rejection uh, or anything like that. So um, yeah, healthy work-life balance in ministry requires good communication with your family and um, and working together on some a little bit of give and take. Yeah, this is, this is a tough issue, communicating and collaborating. It's something that you know, I, I continue to grow in, we, we are not, you, you and I are not necessarily experts in all of these things. We're, we're learning them even, um, to this day, I think any person who's married is continuing to learn how to communicate better and better, mm-hmm. but just giving good communication. This is what my schedule is going to be. Um, and I love what you said, um, AJ about just, uh, setting, setting those expectations, properly like mm-hmm. here's what to expect and then you can certainly reduce the amount of frustration and the longer you wait this is maybe the biggest mistake i've made maybe there's something i don't want to communicate about because i know it's probably not going to be received well so i delay mentioning it mm. for too long <laughs> and then that just makes it worse so <laughs> just rip the band-aid off if you're like ah 
I know I'm going to have this, this meeting, or I know I'm going to have to miss this evening thing or whatever. Say it early so that the family can adjust to that expectation. Don't wait. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's, you know, I don't know. <clears throat> that's probably going to be one of the top things. I think that's one of the top tips uh, from today is managing expectations. Um, yeah. Okay. And kind of all these sort of things, these touch each other. These are all adjacent um, quality time versus quantity time. Scott, mm. I have a hard time. I, you know, I mean, I think sometimes quantity time gets a bad rap, um, but I like both. I try to do both. <laughs> I want a lot yeah, of time and I want it to be good. Um, and, it, and we have such a weird environment over here at my house. We're so not normal, you know, I mean, office from home, home school, we've got quantity time coming out of our ears. I mean, like, you know, we probably should be apart a little bit more, <laughs> but, but, you know, I don't know. I still feel like we have some good quality time as well. Um, and again, as, as I've gotten older and wiser, um, you know, try to cut things off more. I mean, I'm generally out of, uh, out of the office by 5 PM. Um, We've got quite a rhythm, you know, I mean, making dinner, eat at home as a family every day. So, I mean, uh, in fact, I even have a light in my, I've got a light up A, the letter A hanging on the wall in my office. I got it from a Western wear store about 30 years ago that went out of business. It's a yellow wow. A and I have a light in it. And I have it hooked up to an Alexa plug. It's probably all th happening in my house now that I said the word out loud. And uh, it turns on at 8 a.m. in the morning. And it turns off at 5 p.m. It's right here in front of me. And I even can oh. hear the click at 5 p.m. Click, And the light goes off. And I'm like, eh, it's the end of the day, man. I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> unless I've got something that I know I have to do or booked an appointment. But, um, you know, so, you know, I mean, people think sometimes also we think, oh, the quality time is going to be this week vacation that we've planned for six months. Mm -hmm. And good grief. Anybody that's ever gone on a family vacation knows sometimes it's the furthest thing from quality time ever because <laughs> it's just frustration and moving from thing to thing, you know, activities and dealing with timing and tickets and traffic jams. Um, and then you get back to work at the end of the week and you're like, there was nothing quality about that whatsoever. It was only quantity time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might get quality out of a short period of time. Um, and, uh, and, and it's good. It's good stuff. Sometimes maybe even not, nothing planned. Like we're just, we're hanging out together. We're talking. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I guess you could debate quality versus quantity, but, um, it, it requires a balance of both. I think so. And and again, we've talked about these at, already. We've been talking about seasons and we're actually going to be talking more, even more about seasons. But, um, you know, I'm I'm in a season right now, like my kids are age eight and 10. And so I have it in my mind and I think I'm probably right where, you know, my son who's 10, he's about to turn 11 in September. It's just not going to be long until he's going to care more about his friends than he's going to care about me and, and my wife. And, and so I am, I'm investing an absurd amount of time and money into my kids, money that I shouldn't be spending on, on trips and things like this right now. Like no financial planner would tell me, Hey, you should definitely invest this much time and money into what you're doing, but I don't care. Like, I, I feel like this is a, I have a, I have a moment in time mm -hmm. to, what other people would say is wasting money. And I just don't care because mm -hmm. I'm not going to get this time back. Um, and it's the season I'm in and I'm saying no to a lot of things and I'm hurting my bank account and all these things. And I just don't care because there's going to be time later, you know, unless I die, there's going to be time later to recoup that, but I won't get the time back. And yeah. so my kids are in this really sweet age where they're like old enough that they're, you know, they can enjoy things and be relatively self-sufficient in, in sort of the getting yourself dressed and that kind of thing, but not so old that they are jaded and, you know, more interested in their friends and all this stuff. And so I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm trying, I'm taking this year and I'm going, I'm doing both. I'm going to spend a whole lot of time with my family. And if you follow me on, on Instagram, you're going to go, wow, he must be making a lot of money. No, I'm just, I'm just spending a lot of money that I shouldn't. <laughs> 
Uh, and I don't care. I don't care what other people think about me. I don't care about any of that. I am, I am investing in this year. And I think you have to make those choices sometimes and go, you know what? I get this one season with my mm -hmm. kids at this age and in, in this slot. And I don't, I don't care what other people think. I'm, yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah, I, you know, I think you're saying a similar thing to, to a conversation we've had much more in the last several years, and that is spending our money on experiences more than things. Um, that's, man, that's been the best investment, I think, for us, which, for, you know, a lot of times that plays out in like some kind of a travel experience. But, you know, it doesn't need to be expensive travel. It can be inexpensive travel, you know, and, and just choosing to go places that are that are going to be really fun um, and getting to see different different places uh for the kids and yeah um, we're, we're I, i'll just explain we're disney people so we we're not the kind of people we are not the kind of money that can afford an annual pass every year we're doing we did it this year we've been saving we've been squirreling money away for a while and we're and we're doing it so we're, we're making multiple trips to florida over the course of the next year you know i'm i'm using like miles i've saved up I'm using all kinds of little hacks and tricks to try and maximize this year. And again, yeah, if you see me on in, on Instagram or on Facebook, you're be like, they're in Florida again. The answer is yes, we're in Florida again because we're we're doing it. This is the year we're doing it. And then who knows? Maybe we will burn ourselves out literally on Florida for for a while. But um, you know, we're. I, I guess what I'm saying, I, I want to emphasize this. I'm. I know we're getting stuck on this point, AJ. I don't. My biggest fear is that I'll miss a season with my kids. And I know every mm -hmm. season is great. It's it, it's different. They're all different. Mm -hmm. But some seasons you get more of your kids' attention than in other seasons. And I am afraid I will miss this little window I have where my kids are like still kind of into me. And um, and I, I so I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. saying in your ministry, your ministry. <laughs> Don't miss this. Don't miss those little windows that you get mm -hmm. to do unique things with your kids. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Next, we're talking rhythm and Sabbath, rhythm and Sabbath. So, um, gosh, you know, the one thing about that I'll say, I guess, about vocational ministry is there's very much a rhythm to it. Um, while day to day, Yes, there's openings, I think, for personal space, and there's a lot of musts, and there's a lot of fires to put out. But um, in, in some, depending on your personality, some people think rhythm is like the best thing ever. Like they love the structure and repetition. And other people, it's okay, and you can operate in that environment, but it becomes very much, a, you know, a, a drone sensation of of, you know, I got to, I got to break out of it somehow. I need a rest from the rhythm. Um, because Sunday comes every seven days, whether you like it or not. Um, and in, in most of the, most of you listening to us, that's, that's going to be your day of worship. Um, there might, might be some alternate days happening in there, but those are happening on the same seven day rhythm also. So, um, and depending on your church, Every single day of the week might be the seventh day that that thing is happening on every week after week after week. Um, if you're starting to, to get twitches and, and uh, increased heart rate by me describing these things, then you are the person that needs to be able to relax from the rhythm and uh, and have a little bit of a rest and a break from that. I don't need mean to get technical with you, AJ, but Sunday is the first day of the week. The, okay. <laughs> it's a new week. Sunday starts and whatever. Uh, but yes, every seven days, it's, yeah. it's there. Um, yeah, that Sunday, we've talked about it a lot on the podcast, the Sunday to Sunday hamster wheel ministry is, uh, unpredictable in predictable ways. You know, that there's going to be, someone's going to get sick. You know, there's going, someone's going to pass away. You know, there are going to be weddings. You know, there are going to be funerals. You know, there are going to be hospital visits. You know, there are going to be counseling appointments. It's unpredictable because you don't know exactly when those things are going to be, but they're, it's unpredictable in predictable ways. Um, and so uh, at the same time, all the more reason then to really lean into that Sabbath. Some practical tip. I, I heard someone read someone recently. You, others of you listening may have seen this too. I thought this was kind of a good tip. Um, uh, they got a, a, a dumb phone 
for the for their day off. It only takes phone calls. It doesn't do anything else. Mm. Mm. So, um, you know, they. I don't know how you do this. I'm not technologically savvy enough. But on the weekends, they swap their. I guess they swap the SIM card, put the SIM card in the dumb phone. Okay. Really, then, I haven't heard of anybody doing this. Yeah, put the SIM card in the dumb phone on the on the day off. So you really, it's only like you're getting a phone call if someone's sick or in the hospital or dies. Hmm. Um, and then and then uh, when the Sabbath is over, you can put it back in the smartphone. Um, but then that way you're not tempted. You you can't do email that way. You know, you're not going to be tempted to be checking the email. I don't know that I have that kind of commitment personally to to do that full disclosure but um you know if you if there are things like that you could do to really lean into that sabbath i guess so that when you're off you can really be off yeah that's man that's an interesting technological solution uh, that i hadn't heard of <laughs> it's like a lot of work actually oh, yeah. <laughs> uh well yeah but but again you know that uh that that rhythm can drain can drain you after a while. So you need to be aware of, of how that's affecting you. And, and again, because sometimes these rhythms, they just go on and on and on. You may not even recognize, you know, that, that that's happening to you. So, you know, refer back to the previous point about uh, communication and collaboration with those closest to you. Maybe they can help bring to the surface, raise to your level of consciousness, maybe something that you're, it's maybe time for a break. The rhythm is kind of, uh, it's affecting, beginning to affect you. And uh, you need to be able to break out of that for a short time. Yes. Um, okay, finally, is this our last one, Scott? It is our last one. Yeah, Grace last and one. flexibility. Grace and flexibility. You know what? All the, the best made plans are going to fall apart from time to time. Uh, just, I mean, again, set your own expectations because even if you're the, that, the techno dumb phone person that you're like, Oh, I got this figured out. I'm changing my SIM card. Um, you know what? It's something that's still going to backfire and blow up on you. And it's just the way it is. So set your own expectations that, Hey, I'm making some good, um, rules for myself and I'm making some good plans and I'm prioritizing properly. Things are just going to come up. You know, I mean, just as you described, Scott, the weekend last November that happened or the week. And, and you know, you got to give yourself grace, Scott. You need to give yourself grace for that, my friend. Don't, <laughs> don't let, let it go. Let it go. Um, because that's just going to happen. And your family will as well, especially when they know you're trying and you are making them a priority you're going to receive grace from those around you too, because, you know, they, they see what's happening and, and they know this is just, it's one of those things. Um, but yep. when you're, when you're not making people a priority, when you're, you know, not intentionally, but end up almost abusing relationships sometimes and prioritizing the wrong things um, is when we, by our human, our sinful human nature are less likely to give grace to others. Uh, like, well, you, you beat me up a few too many times here. I'm not interested in whatever the excuse is. Um, so, you know, I mean, do your best. I mean, structure your life. Well, try to structure your life. Well, but no, things are going to come up and happen. And, uh, yeah. and we just got to work through that and then, you know, keep going. I don't have much to add to that. Yeah. I, I would, you know, I would say, um, extend grace, but don't abuse the grace, you know, mm -hmm. do your best. Right. And you're going to make mistakes. I, I, I feel like I've tried to be really transparent in this episode and just say, I, you know, I've messed this one up a lot, but I try to learn and get better next time. And, you know, and it should be a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. I mean, when we first, when I first got married, you know, I would, I would constantly check email on vacation or take a phone call or whatever, you know, um, you know, we were, we were out somewhere with my family a, a couple of, I guess last month and um I had I had to take a meeting and it was really irritating um to to everyone and including myself but it was my fault here's a tip sorry this is a side tip if you mark yourself if you mark a whole day off be sure you go in to your Google Calendar or Outlook or whatever and make sure it's marked as busy and not free something snuck in there and got on my calendar and I couldn't I didn't notice it until way too late. 
And so I didn't have a chance to move it. And so I was like, listen, this will be a 15 minute meeting. And it was a 15 minute meeting, but it, it communicated to everyone else that I, it was not good. So I've been really trying to be sure that I go, if I block something off, that I go in there and make sure it's marked as busy. So if you make a mistake, accept the grace, extend the grace, but try to learn from it and go, what could I do differently? Mm-hmm. Um, if it's true, your fault, sometimes stuff comes up. It's not your fault, but um, if it's something that you were like, I could have managed that better, do better. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Hey, we're recording two more episodes of the church revitalization podcast today. So watch on YouTube and you'll see we have the same clothes on for the next two weeks right. because hey, I was trying to disguise it by wearing my TMG up. branded <laughs> stuff here. <laughs> Hey, but we're taking our, we're taking our own advice here. We're pl- we plan ahead. We're getting getting things done so that quality and quantity time can be available for those that we love. Um, hey, do it, do it. Don't wait another day. Work this out so that you you're set to have the best experience in ministry, and those around you will feel that way about it as well. This has been episode 198. So over at malfordgroup.com slash 198 you can read today's article and uh there's a link over there you can watch us on youtube we'd love to have you there uh be sure and subscribe while you're on youtube and uh leave us a comment we'd love to hear you know maybe some other tips that you discovered as well for managing your work-life balance uh that might be helpful for others you can comment over there on youtube about that also and hey we will see you uh on episode 199 coming up next week